Okay, um, so new hardware is great, but we all know it's the hardware and software that makes it all happen. And sometimes with the applications we're going after, we need to come out with entirely new software experiences. Uh, in, in this example, we're gonna look at a brand new diagram. And to tell us more about it, I'd like to introduce Dr. Tikal Inui and Yang Rao from the LabVIEW team. Okay, Takao, uh, let's start with you. Why don't you tell us a little more about your background? Sure. I just recently joined NI after finishing my PhD at the University of Texas at Austin, where I specialize in MIMO communications. Um, so I was brought on to the RF communication group to bring in my expertise on wireless communication system design. So you're one of the guys that shows up on that chart we just showed. Um, now, explain a little more about these challenges for communication system design. Sure. So we heard about this cool smartphone application this morning, which happens to make phone calls, but making that phone call happen actually takes a lot of technology and complex design behind it. For example, you might start with a, a design phase where you start with a theoretical algorithm design using latest mathematical tools and communication. Okay, theory. hold on, let me stop you. So uh, what I'm hearing is there's lots of tools and lots of people involved to make a phone call work. That's right, typically, you know, tens to hundreds of researchers, architects, uh, various d discipline engineers are involved, and not just the people, but the tools involved are so diverse, you know, programming in C, VHDL, and different hardware platforms that you can use. So, so now you're going to tell us that LabVIEW can simplify this whole thing, right? That's right. So we all know LabVIEW is a great platform for designing algorithms and doing desktop simulation and also deploying to RT and FPGA. But doing these wireless, complex wireless applications is still quite challenging. So I'm happy to, here today to talk about a new uh, diagram that we're working on called DSP Designer and that will improve our design experience. All right. So what problem are you going to show us today that's solved with this new diagram? Sure. So I'm going to look at the OFDM transmitter example, which is a typical of today's wireless communication uh, technique. And this block might involve a zero padding block that takes the frequency domain samples and matches the samples to input via the IFFT. IFFT might modulate the signals to, for your transmission and followed by multiple filtering stages to match the sampling rate to your D2A converter. Now, one of the characteristics of these blocks are it, all these blocks takes a certain number of inputs and produces a different number of outputs, and these are called multi-rate blocks. And in traditional LabVIEW data flow, you will deal with these multi-rate blocks by using loops and queues. But in DSP Designer, we have extended the notion to support these multi-rate blocks natively in the diagram. Okay, so if you're a guru in LabVIEW, you can do all this today, but we've got a, a, a new diagram to simplify it. Right? So let's take a look at that. So DSP Designer is an add-on to LabVIEW FPGA. So we can open a, a DSP Designer window from the project window. An open diagram is called a DSP diagram. And Young has opened and op a partially complete open diagram and dropped in a Xilinx IFFT block and wired them up. And we see immediately that this block is a good representation of the conceptual diagram that we showed earlier, which is great for the algorithm designers. Okay, I can see it's, it's, it looks like a LabVIEW diagram. You're dropping VIs and you're wiring together, but uh, there seems to be a lot more going on with these That's right. icons. So as a part of early stage design exploration, you might want to look at the timing and resource usage of your design. So one of the things DSP Designer can do for you is set the schedule, timing schedule for you and view that in your lower part of the screen. And this shows you uh, how each of the blocks are executed and pipelined in time. So the top is your algorithm, and then the bottom half, it tells you how long it's going to take for that to execute. Uh, now what other kind of things can you design in this diagram? So when we set the schedule here, we actually assume that there's an infinite buffer size between the, each of the blocks. So to make this more realistic to the hardware constraint, we can set the throughput constraint to be, say, 25 mega samples as required by LTE example, and we can let the DSP designer set the buffer size automatically for you to meet that uh, throughput specification. Okay, so uh, you said you're an algorithm guy, not an FPGA guy. So how does this integrate with uh, LabVIEW FPGA? Sure. So we said this was a part of a LabVIEW FPGA. Um, we can simply uh, take this design and generate a LabVIEW FPGA code, and this will create a DSP VI in your project window, which you can drop into your LabVIEW FPGA design as if it were another IP. So underlying this is a complete LabVIEW FPGA code. And it sets up all the buffers and everything based on your design. Very cool. So uh, now we've got an actual setup here in hardware. Why don't you explain this, this yeah. demo? 
So using a collection of software and hardware, I'm excited to show you our latest over-the-air closed-loop LTE demo. So this is how it works. Um, we have one chassis representing the base station with two transmit antennas, and another chassis representing a mobile terminal with two receive antennas, making up a two-by-two two MIMO system. Now, doing this one-way communication prototyping is already traditionally very hard to do. But we have pushed this even further and added a reverse link to communicate some information back from the mobile terminal to the base station to form the closed loop. So you talk a lot about closed loop, MIMO, LTE. What, why is that so important? That's right. So let's take a look at an analogy. So suppose I'm a base station and John is the mobile terminal. One-way communication is like me talking one way without ever listening to what John has to say to me. Yeah, uh, I'm very familiar with one-way conversations. <laughs> I have them every night. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna pay for that one. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, so, uh, what's going on in the front panel? Sure. So let's look at the front panel of uh, this is the front panel of the receive um, side at the mobile terminal. What we're seeing is the uh, uh, spectrum plot and the constellation plot on the top. And basically, this constellation plot, each of the droplets basically represents, relates to the number of bits that are being transmitted over each of the antennas. Okay, so it seems to be jumping around a lot. How do we know it's real? Uh, you know, are we, are we faking this or is it really transmitting? No, it's really transmitting, and that's why it's jumping around a lot. You know, I, I thought everybody heard the earlier warning to shut off your Wi Fi's and cell phone devices. Apparently, some people haven't listened, and we'll. Lis listening to a lot of noise here, and as a result, our system is actually transmitting over the air, adapting to the changing environment, and that's what you're seeing over here. So that's the adaptive link, and you can see the whole thing has been designed and prototyped in LabVIEW and FPGA-based hardware. That's so. right. This is really the, you know, closing this loop is really difficult, and this is the, the radio engineer's dream come true platform. All right, and we've got a whole session later this afternoon that goes into this demo, so if you'd like to learn more, check for that on the calendar. Thanks, guys. Thank you.